All right. So at home, you did that quiz, right? And you, set, you followed a set of steps, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off today, not with a problem like that, something that we did in class last time where we were talking about excluded values in domains. That's where I'm going to start. Then I'm going to do one more like we did for a quiz, and then I'm move to chapter eight. So let's talk a little bit about domains. I'm going to take this function, and this one's going to be a kind of a nasty looking function, but that's the whole point. I want you to see how this can, how this can be. x squared minus 9x plus 18 over x squared minus 8x minus 9. Okay, how is that? Is it too bright in here? Do we need to kill lights or we're all right? Everyone's okay? Okay, the, the question here is I want us to find the excluded values. And we talked about last time fractions, right? And we talked about um, the cookie and why you can't divide by zero, right? So whenever we look at domains of functions, like, like a rational function like this one is, rational fraction, right? All we concern ourselves with is what? What's the only thing we have to look at in this problem? The denominator. Okay, that's right. All we have to say is, look, we ask ourselves, self, what makes that zero, right? Because that's what I don't want to happen. So I just write down for my own knowledge here, hmm, I wonder what makes this zero question to myself. What makes that zero? Because that's going to cause a problem and that's going to be my excluded value or values. Now, when I look at that equation there, can you all tell that's in red? Yeah. Um, what type of equation is this? Is it linear? Quadratic, quadratic, right? What makes it quadratic? The fact that x is squared. So now you have to ask yourself this question. Do I know how to solve a quadratic equation? The answer to that should be yes, because you should have taken 0302 or you tested in here to this level. You should know how to solve a quadratic equation. There are options. So let's talk about some options. Anyone want to tell me what one option is? Pardon? Okay, so that would be factoring. Good. So you're taking the left side and you're breaking it into something like, you know, this times this. Okay, that's called factoring. Yes, was that kind of where you were also? Okay. Now, that's one way, factoring it. Any other ways to solve quadratic equations? Quadratic formula. Now, the advantage to the quadratic formula is that it works for every quadratic equation. Right? How many of you, you've seen quadratic formula, right? Should have seen quadratic. Um, there's also completing the square. How many of you were taught how to complete the square? I don't teach the, well, I don't stress the completing the square because the quadratic formula will do what the completing the square does in any way. Um, it's usually personal preference. So right here, at this point is where, you know, you might want to just say, hey, do I know how to solve that? If I don't, I might want to get some help on solving quadratic equations. Or if you're going to factor, that would be the advantage of going to that free session to get some help on factoring. What I am going to choose to do is I'm going to factor it. But I'm not going to present this as if this is the first time I'm ever teaching factoring. I'm going to assume you've seen it. And maybe you've seen this way, maybe you haven't. I'm going to do what's called the AC method with grouping which is supposed to be the standard way of factoring that we teach here. AC method is you start with the number in front of the x squared, which is a 1. And then you look at the number in the back by itself, which is the negative 9. And you take those two numbers, and what do you do with them if you're going to do AC method? Multiply them together. When you multiply neg uh, 1 and negative 9 together, you get negative 9. What's the other number you look at now? The 8. That's the number in front of the x. And actually here, it's a negative 8, isn't it? 
You take that negative eight, you write it down somewhere. I usually put it below. Now, depending on how you were taught this method, what you have to come up with is two numbers that multiply to be negative nine, but add up to be negative eight. And I've taught my students in 0302 class to make this little cross thing. How many of you saw the cross? That's another thing a lot of us were trying to get, like we all agreed to do that way. So that's the cross. All it does is it gives you a place to put the two numbers. So what two numbers multiply to be negative nine, but add up to be negative eight? One and negative nine. So I just put them there, one and negative nine. Then what I do is I go back to the problem over here on the left side that I've circled there, and I rewrite it, x squared, but instead of negative eight x, I put plus one x minus nine x, and then I leave the minus nine equals zero. So essentially that negative eight there in front of the x was replaced with two terms, the positive one x and the negative nine x. Now, the reason we do that is so I can continue with, with what's called grouping, which means we factor this new thing. It has four terms. Now, we factor it looking at the first two and the second two terms separately. So looking just at the first two terms there, what can factor out of both terms? What do they both have in common? X. So I pull an X out. I should be left with an X plus 1. Now look at the, the next two terms, negative 9x minus 9. What do those both have in common? Negative 9. So you pull a negative 9 out, and you're left with an x plus 1. That's called grouping. That's what I just did there, factoring by grouping. Now what we need is for what's in the parentheses to match, which they do. So I write down whatever matches x plus 1, and then in another set of parentheses... I put what? X minus 9. And that comes from the X in front and the minus 9 here. So again, I'm not showing you this like, hey, first time I've ever shown this to you. I'm looking at it like you've seen this before. If you don't know how to do this, that's okay if you know how, another way. Like some people are taught guess and check. Or maybe you just looked at that right off the bat and knew that it was X plus 1, X minus 9. If you're there, great. All right, now once we have it here, now we set each of those factors equal to zero. So I take the x plus one, I set that to zero, I take x minus nine, set that to zero. And I get two answers here by solving those little equations. What are the answers? Negative one and positive nine. I do expect that you could solve those little linear equations. So those are my what? I mean, what do those answers represent there? Negative 1 and positive 9. Excluded values, which means that these cannot be put into the function, right? If I try and plug those in, what would happen? We get division by 0. So those are excluded. All right, that's it for that. No, I think, I think I'm going to move into eight, chapter 8. I was going to do another problem like your quiz. How, let's, let's do a vote. We'll make this more democratic here. How many of you would like for me to do another example of the quiz problem or something similar to it? One, two, three, four, five. Five is enough. We go with that. I didn't say it was going to be a, a majority. It was just going to be a vote. How many of you have taken government here? Or a, a government class? College, high school, right? Our, our uh, country is not a true democracy, right? It's what? What do they call it? Hypocrisy. A representative democracy? Right? We elect officials who actually elect the president, right? Are, are you all with me or not? It's like if I say, hey, look, let's take a vote in here of whether or not we want to take the day off, right? And we say majority rules. So how many of you would like to take day off? 
right? Then everyone's like, okay, the majority rules, right? That's what we do. In the United States, it is not, okay, for president, it is not everyone raise their hand, okay, let's count them. That's not the way it works, right? It's different than that. It's every state has a certain number of votes. And so it's not truly based on the number of votes. Ah, anyway. Um, I guess I'm saying that because I saw a map the other day. Someone, some artist had drawn a new map of the United States that had 50 states with equal populations. So like Texas was like six states and California was like seven states. And then like all that, like Montana and all those states up there, all of those were clumped together as like one big state. Just showing like how populations split up in the U.S. is pretty interesting. Why I'm thinking about that right now, I, could, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Sorry, my mind's wandering. Uh, 12 over X. Minus. So I'm doing another problem like your quiz. Very, very similar to your quiz. One thing we want to try and keep in mind here is that come your first test, right? I'm not going to tell you solve, well, I will say solve, okay? But I will not say solve this rational equation. I'll just say solve. But this is going to be mixed in with a bunch of other stuff you have to do, right? So part of your task as a student is to be able to look at the problem, recognize what it is, and know what to do. So the thing here that would kind of tip you off, you have an equal sign. That means it's an equation. It has a bunch of fractions. Remember, ratio, fraction, rational. And anytime we have a rational equation, there were a set of six steps. So you would have that on your cheat sheet, right? Your little six steps. You would know where to go for that. And let's do them. First step on the six step process is to find the excluded, right? Now, what we can do to look at excluded is we just look at all the denominators. And we ask ourselves, just like we did in the example right before this, we looked at the denominator and we said, what makes it zero, right? We look at all three denominators here and we ask ourselves, what makes them zero? So let me look at that first denominator, x. What makes it zero? I'm asking myself. The other one, four, what makes it zero? The last one, four x, what makes it zero? All right, so those are like the three denominators set equal to zero. And let me look, look at these now. The first one, x equals zero. That is the answer, right? X is zero. How about four equals zero? That can't happen, right? Four is not zero. So I don't even worry about that. I scrap it. And then the third one? Yes. yes, but how do we get an answer here? How do we take the four out? How do we take that four out of here? What's the operation between the four and the x? It's multiplication, right? How do you undo multiplication? Divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4, right? What's 0 divided by 4? Zero. 0, right? Remember that was the cookie that we broke up and we didn't give it to the kid? Okay, that's the 0. So we get x is 0. So we got x equals 0 twice, didn't we? That's all right. You can have the same thing twice. So what we know is at the end of this problem, we will be checking to make sure our answer is not 0. Because if it is 0, we're going to throw it out. Second step. Yep, LCD. So to do your LCD, again, you look at all the denominators and you create this thing. The first denominator was the X, right? And we said, well, we need an X, right? If we have an X there, we need an X. So I'm going to put an X here. That's part of my LCD. The second denominator is a 4, which means I'll need a 4. So I put a 4, and I'm, we normally put the 4 in front of the x, right? We don't usually write x4. We write 4x. So I've got that, that 4 taken care of. And then the last one says 4x. I already have 4x, right? I've got 4 and x covered, so I don't need any additional factors in there. So that should suffice. Now, moving along, to, uh, third step, 
What do you do with that LCD? Multiply it through, both sides of the equation. So let me get back here where I can see my equation. I'll put my equation here, 12 over x minus 3 over 4 equals 42 over 4x. All right, I'm coming through with 4x on both sides. Okay. Let's say two minutes. I'm going to give you two minutes to distribute that through and solve it. I'm going to come around and see what you do. I just kind of see... Okay, so when we distribute through, we get 48x over x minus 12x over 4 equals 168x over 4x. At this point, we will reduce fractions. Okay, cancel things where we can. So these x's cancel, right? These x's cancel. I just have a 48 here now. Minus, now the 12 divided by 4 is a 3. So we have 3, but we still have the x, right? And then 168 divided by 4 is 42. Now, if you do everything correctly, what should you have after you've done that LCD on both sides? Or what should you not have anymore? You should not have fractions. Okay? That's the whole point of multiplying both sides by the LCD, is to eliminate fractions. So the equation we have left here doesn't have fractions. And that leads us to step four, which is to solve the remaining equation. Now, this is a linear equation, right? So to solve it, I will isolate the variable, get the x term by itself, subtract 48 on both sides. I have negative 3x equals 42 take away 48, negative 6. Add 3, divide, right? Okay, divide by 3, negative 3, negative 3, and you get a 2. So x is 2. Now, step 5, I check it with the excluded. Is my answer one of my excluded values? No. The only excluded value you had was 0. And the final step, step 6, is to take your answer, which is 2, plug it into the original problem and see if it works. So it was 12 over x, which is 2, minus 3 over 4 equals, what was it? 42 over 4x, but 4 times x would be 4 times 2, which is 8. You all with me? Okay. Is that true? Ooh. I'm showing you this because we have to mess with fractions, so I intentionally want to see what you do with this. Yes? Yeah? No? Was that a raising? No? You're, you're like a fraction. Okay, that's a good thing. I like to walk into Subway and ask them for, like, weird fractions of a, of a sandwich, you know? And they don't, they don't like it. Actually, I don't like Subway. I don't, eat, I don't like the way it smells. You know, you come out of Subway, you smell like a bread shop. Yeah. I just don't like that smell. You could. Good. You could get a common. Thank you for keeping me on track. Um, all right. What, what denominator would be common with all of these fractions? An 8. Now, this is not the way you have to do it, but I like this idea. 8, right? So turn this 2 into an 8. How? Four. Multiply top and bottom by 4. Turn this 4 into an 8 by multiplying... Top and bottom by 2 here. So what we'd get is 4 times 12, which is 48. That's not a 48. 48 over 8 minus, now I'm multiplying top and bottom by 2 here. So what, 6 over 8 equals 42 over 8? Is that correct? Yes. Because yes. on the left side, when we subtract two fractions... Right? When we subtract two fractions that have the same denominator, all we do is subtract the numerators. So 48 minus 6 is 42. Keep the denominator. That checks. So our answer, we, we did our work right. Correctly. It appears. Okay. That's it.
for 7.5, that's the only thing that we're going to do. Now we move into chapter 8. Uh, chapter 8 is titled... Radicals or Roots and Radicals. Roots and Radicals. The first section is what we're going to be doing here is simplifying. adding and subtracting square roots. Now most of us walking into this class are familiar with what a square root is. All right, so I'm going to refresh our memory real quick to make sure we're all on the same page. When we say, you know, what is the square root of a number? Like, what's the square root of A? And let's say I come up with an answer and let's just say it's B. What this means is that B, when you square it, you get back the A. So let's that's like the mathematical way of looking at it. Let's look at it with, a, with, a, with an exact example. What is the square root of 1? Yeah, so what's B? 1. Why? Because when you square 1, you get 1, right? So if I were to color code this, right here is right here. Those are the blues. And the green is just that piece there, right? Let's try another one. I mean, it's, again, this stuff you've probably seen. Square root of 4 is 2. And that's because when you square 2, you get back the 4, don't you? Square root of 9 is 3. And I could keep going, right? I could actually do any of those that are on that perfect square list. The square root of 16 is what? 4. Square root of 25 is 5, 36, 6, 40. Okay, so we're okay with that? No question with that? All right. The trouble happens when I give you a number that's not a perfect square. So here's 8.1.2. Let's try this. As an example, let's try and take the square root of 90. Now, 90 is not on our list over here, right? It's not on our list. So we need to try and figure out if there's any way we can simplify this, right? So that would be the instruction here, simplify. So can we simplify this? Hold on, that thing is really bothering me. Does anyone else see that little dot up there? It's really bothering me. Did y'all see it? All right. So since it's not on our list, what can we do to, to, to figure this out? Well, here's the, here's the approach. We will take the number 90, and we will try and break it down into two numbers. Any two numbers that you can think of that multiply to be 90. So let someone give me two numbers multiply to be 90. Three, three. Okay, hold on. I heard 3 and 30. I heard... 9 and 10, I heard, I thought I heard something else. 2 and 45, any others that you can think of? Mm, 5 and, what is it? 18. Okay, so there's quite a few, right? Any of those I could use, right? Any of them. What you're trying to do 
is find a, a pair of numbers that multiplies to be 90, where one of those numbers is a perfect square. Okay? Let's try and find which of those would have a number in there that's a perfect square. When I say perfect square, I'm talking about the right side of those equations over there. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 4. So what? 9 and 10, right? So watch this. I'm going to take the 9 and 10 because the 9 is a perfect square. And I'm going to take the problem. I'm going to rewrite it. So square root of 90, do you agree, equals the square root of 9 times 10? Yes? That little dot in the middle of them means multiplication. Now, there is a property. It is on page 523. It's called the product rule for radicals or for square roots. It says that if you have two things being multiplied, which we do underneath the root, you can split it into two roots and multiply those. So I can make this become a square root of 9 times a square root of 10. And what is the square root of 9? 3. So I put 3 here and then square root of 10. We're almost done, but we need to check something. We need to check the 10, and we need to ask ourselves, does the 10 break down where you have two numbers, and can you do it where you have one of them be a, a perfect square? So next to the 90 here, I'm going to put a 10. What two numbers multiply to be 10? 2 and 5? How about 1 and 10? Yes? But you'll never do 1 in anything, okay? Anytime you have a number and you want to try and break down, don't ever do 1 in that number. It's... it's just a waste of time. So you have two and five, right? Two times five? Are either one of those a perfect square? No. If you get to that point, you are done. Okay? We are done. So our simplified answer is, the way you say this, is three root ten. Or three times the square root of ten. But the short way is three root ten. Okay? Okay? I'll do one more and then it's going to be time for you to, well, you know what? I think I'm going to do a little bit more and then I'll give you a couple of problems to work out. How about this? As an example, uh, I'm going to start a new page. Does everyone have this? Okay. The new page or new example here, square root of, I want it to be ugly. The question is how ugly? Mm. You know what? Give me a second. I want to make it. I want to see someone cry. If I can make someone cry, I'd be good. <laughs> I'm kidding. I want it to be workable, but I don't want it to be too obvious. Mm. There we go. That's a good one. Square root 486. The square root of 486. Now, when we had 90 up there, everyone was like, oh, 9 times 10, you know, 2 times 45, blah, 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 right? Everyone was just firing stuff out. What about 486? It's not as easy to spit things out, right? So what is going to be the approach on this? Here's the approach that I recommend. You get your calculator out, okay? And what you do with your calculator is you start asking yourself, what divides into 486? But don't just pick random numbers. What you want to do is start dividing 486 by perfect squares. Starting with the first perfect square, well, other than one, which is four. So on the side here, I'm going to just be doing scratch work. I'm going to do, this is, that's not a square root. This is division. 486, I'm going to be dividing it by four. Or if you like this, 486 divided by four. So I do that on my calculator real quick. 486 divided by four. And when I do that, I get 121.5. That's no good. 
because what I'm looking for are two nice integers. So that doesn't work? So I'll scratch it out. That doesn't work. The next thing I should try and divide by is the next perfect square, which is 9. And you get 54. Okay? That's good. That's a start because if, I, if I'm saying 486 is 9 times 54, I, the next thing I was supposed to ask myself was, is one, are, are, one of those numbers, are one of those numbers a perfect square? 9 is a perfect square, right? So I'm in business. Right now, I'm going to go right back to the problem here. I'm going to say that that's equal to square root of 9 times 54. Then using the product rule, I'm going to break it into two. What is the square root of 9? 3. Square root of 54. Am I done? Ooh. Am I done? No, because now I need to look at 54, don't I? And I need to say, okay, 54. Can I break 54 down to be two numbers? And one of them being a perfect square. Yes. What, what perfect square goes into 54? 9. 9 times 6. Y'all following? What? No? You, yeah, you had it. See, if you can pick it up quick, it's, that's, that's no, no problem with me. And what are you doing? Oh, in high school. Okay. Here we go, root nine, root six. We can talk, we should talk then after class. Root nine, root six. That okay? Questions with that? Broke it into two. Square root of nine we know is three. So three, three, root six. Can you break the root six down? Six is only two and three, so you can't do anything with that. What is the three, three out in front? Is that 33? It's three times three, right? So we get, final answer, nine root six. Okay. Hmm. Okay, now... I'll show you one thing, and then we're going to do our in-class little assignment here. What is the square root of x squared? x. Now, why is that true? Because when you take x, the answer, and you square it, don't you get x squared. So remember how I color coded this earlier? It was like this. The square root of x squared should just be x itself because when you take x and square it, you get x squared. Most students walk into a class like this and they know that square root of x squared is x. But how about the square root of x cubed. That's not so straightforward. So watch the way I'm going to do this. The square root of x cubed, couldn't you write x cubed as x squared times x? Couldn't you? Yeah. And now couldn't I use a product rule and turn that into two square roots? Square root of x squared times square root of x? Y'all see what I'm doing? You have to agree that x cubed is x squared times x. Right? Then just split it into two. And what did we say the first one here was? What's, x, what's the square root of x squared? It's just x, right? The square root of x squared is just x. And then what is the square root of x? Well, I don't know. It's just the square root of x. I can't do anything with that. So that's our answer. 
the square root of x cubed is x root x. What's the square root of x to the fourth? So we keep going all day here, right? I mean, we're going to find a pattern, okay? And at the end of it all, we'll, we'll see the pattern and we'll have a different way of approaching this. What is this going to be? You could turn this into x squared times x squared, right? And then the square root of x squared, split it into two square roots. And what are each of those? The first one, first one here is what? What's square root of x squared? Just x. And the second one here, square root of x squared again? x again. So you have x times x, which is x squared. How about the square root of x to the fifth? Watch this. How about x, square, uh, x to the fourth times x? Do you agree that x to the fifth is x to the fourth times x? And then I could split that into square root of x to the fourth times square root of x. What did we just say the square root of x to the fourth was? x squared, right? So isn't this piece right here x squared? And what's still sitting there next to it? Square root of x. There's a pattern. I'm wondering if you're seeing the pattern here. I'm going to box our answers here. Do you all see a pattern? Look at the first one. At x squared, square root of x squared was what? x. Square root of x cubed was x, but then we tacked on the square root of x to it, right? Square root of x to the fourth was x squared. Square root of x to the fifth was x squared, but then we tacked an x onto it, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think the next one's going to be? Square root of x to the sixth. x cubed. And then what do you think the square root of x to the seventh would be? x cubed square root of x. So where is, where is the 3 here coming from in, in relationship to where the beginning of the problem? How is the, the 3 related to the 6? It's half of it, right? It's half of it. How about the 3 here and the 7? It's half of it plus 1, basically. So let's see if we can kind of put this together and put our heads around how we could do this in general. All right. Here we go. How about if I give you a problem like this? What is the square root of x to the 70th power? The pattern that I want you to see here is that anytime you're taking the square root of a variable to a power like that, you ask yourself, how many times does 2 go into 70? 35. And it goes in evenly, right? 2 times 35 is 70. So your answer is just x to the 35. And you're done. So for even powers, it's very straightforward. x to the 400th. Square root of x to the 400th would be x to the 200th. All right? Where it becomes a little challenging is when we put an odd number in there. So what's the square root of x to the 71? Well, we know, we know that 70, it was 35, right? So you're asking yourself again, how many times does 2 go into 71? 35 times with the remainder of 1, with 1 left over, right? So what I'm going to say is my answer is 35, x to 35, but that 1 that's left over has to be under a root. How about square root of x to the 2037? What's the square root of x to the 2037? So how many times does 2 go into 2037? So right, if you would need a calculator, you could do that. I don't, 1018 with 1 left over, right? So it would be x to the 1018 
How do we represent the one left over? Square root x. So wouldn't you agree with me that any time it's an even number, you don't have a square root left over? But any time it's an odd number, you'll always have a square root left over, right? Okay. We'll put it together into one example, and then it's time for you to get down to business. All right, let's do the square root of 98x to the 13th. Uh, you know what? Let's not make it X. Let's change it. Let's make it a, an M. I mean, why, why get so particular about our variables? So I'm using M instead of X. What I've done in this problem is I've combined both numbers and letters or variables into one square root. So the approach to this will be to first split it up. I can do that because of that product rule, right? Split into two. Now, the square root 98 is, we did that a certain way, and the m to the 13th is like the x to the 13th. We do that a different way. Let's do the m to the 13th first, because that's the freshest thing in our minds, right? You say to yourself, how many times does two go into 13, right? Six times with one left over. So how will... How will I write this? What will it turn into? M to the sixth square root of M. Is everyone all right with that? Now, what do we do with the root 98? Break down the, the 98. So I'm going to do that as scratch work here on the side. Um, square root of 90, or sorry, 98. Two numbers that multiply to be 98. 49 and 2. Excellent. 49 is a great number to use because it's a, it's a big, perfect square, right? I'm going to have to go to a new page. Okay, we are at square root 98. And then the other one was m to the sixth square root m. That's where we were. But you just said that 98 breaks down to be 49 times 2 and then m to the sixth square root m. That's where we are. What do we do with the uh, square root 49 times two? Split it into two, right? The biggest mistakes I see are people, um, students will forget like when, do, when does the square root go away um, or they'll leave it there even after they take the square root. So on that square root 49, that will turn into a 7, right? No more square root on top of it, just a 7 by itself. So I will have a 7. The square root 2, I can't do anything with square root 2 still. m to the 6th, square root m. Now, we cannot break down the 2 anymore, right, underneath that root? The, and then the square root of m by itself is just sitting there. So you would think you're done. But what, they, what the book will want you to do, what, what I'll want you to do, is to never leave an answer where you have two roots like that. We want to put these two roots back together. And what we're going to do is the product rule backwards. Squeeze them back into one root. And then we'll take the 7 and the m to the 6th and we'll put those together. So 7m to the 6th, square root of... To M. Done. All right. I think that should be enough. Now, this is not all of 8.1. We still need to do more. But uh, for your homework, I'm going to put this on the board. And then I'm going to give you a cla an in-class assignment. Uh, do 11 through... 17 odd, do 27 through 41 odd, yeah, 27 through 41 odd, oh, what page, sorry, is that what you said, page 529, 27 through 41 odd, 
That's odd. People sometimes are like, what is that? It's odd. O-D-D. My O's and D's kind of look the same. Ooh. In calculus, we have something that does not exist. And I had a student that went through almost the whole semester and was like, why do you keep writing one next to everything? And I'm like, man. So now I like, have to make a point to say what that is. Um, the next 65 through 79 odd. And I didn't give you the rest of the homework out of 75, did I? Oops. Back on page 496, you should look at problem 13, 17 through, no, just 17 and 19. 13, 17, 19. So those are your two separate assignments. This is from 8.1. This one's from 7.5. All right. Now, what I'm going to do for the remaining 15 minutes, I'm going to give you a couple of problems. You can work through them with your neighbors, not taking it up as a quiz. You can leave as soon as you've checked it with me. And that means I've come by and I've said, yep, everything looks good. Uh, we do need to do attendance. So I'll take care of that in a second. Let me get the problems up on the board so you can get started. Here we go. Uh, one. Find excluded values. Okay, the first two, I've done something like those. The third one, I've given you a square root and two variables underneath. I just want to see what you come up with without me ever have shown you an shown you example like that. I want to see what you do. All right? Okay, I'm going to real quick stop the video.